Hey guys, so today's video is to help you if you've got a problem with your heating system and you have no heat right now, or you just want to know more about it, I'm going to show you the most common things that go wrong with your heating system that prevent it working. So before you call a heating contractor or a plumber, watch this video from beginning to end. And I put this video in a special order. I started at the easiest thing that you can check all the way up to the most difficult, but all of them are things you can do yourself. You can watch this video and I'll take you through step by step. And you'll probably be surprised to find out that the things I'm going to show you are the most common reasons that people call with no heat calls. And I hope I can help you fix your heating system, get you back up and running and save you some money. So as I told you with the intro to this video, we're going to start with the first easy tip. Now that tip is your thermostat. Now don't panic. I'm not saying that your thermostat's broken. It's actually much easier than that. Take a look at what's blinking in the corner of this thermostat. That little blinking thing says replace battery. Now that seems like such a basic thing, but if you looked quickly at this thermostat at the beginning, it looked like it was working just fine. And that's the problem with most thermostats. They look like they're operating correctly, but the issue is the batteries aren't strong enough to switch the heat on any longer. So if you have a no heat situation, this is what you want to do. You want to change these batteries out. It's just an easy thing to do, and this is a process of elimination, and this is the number one reason people's heating systems or even air conditioning systems will fail. These batteries just die, and they don't look like they're dead, so swap them out. So as I'm changing these out, you might think, I don't have batteries in the house, and maybe this is the middle of the night when you're watching this video. So don't forget, your TV remote control is the best source for batteries if you're in a pinch. You almost always will have a remote that either has AA or AAA. So if you're watching this and you're in a bad situation, rob them out of your remote control, put them in your thermostat, and see if that solves your problem. Now we're just going to close this back up and make sure the thermostat powers back on. If it fixes your heat, you're done. But if not, let's go to the second most common item. Next item we want to check is this. This is your emergency burner off switch. Every house in the U.S. is going to have a switch like this. It's usually at the top of your cellar stairs. It might be somewhere near your kitchen, but it's always going to have this red plate. Now, I'm just showing you a few examples, but they all look pretty much the same. You want to find this switch and make sure it's in the on position. Now, don't discount this because you're going to say, I would never switch it off. But you've got to remember, this happens all the time, and it's usually not you. It might be your kids, it might be a relative, somebody visiting, or you might have even just hit it by mistake. So double check that this switch is absolutely in the on position. Next thing we want to check is your electrical circuit breaker panel. Now don't get nervous, I'm only going to show you things you're supposed to do. Now in every house, your heating system is almost always going to have its own circuit breaker. So take a look at the listing of your circuit breakers and you can see right there, I have one that says burner. It might say gas heating system, it might say heating system. But you want to find the number of the circuit breaker and then you want to go up to the panel and take a look. If that circuit is off or tripped, like this is here, you want to go ahead and try to at least flip it back to the on position. Now normally breakers don't trip, but they do sometimes and it's not always a serious problem. So you want to at least try to flip it back on and if it stays on, you may have solved your problem right there. If it trips again immediately, you're going to have to call a heating person or an electrician. But give this a try because this also happens. There's not always a known reason, but you want to make sure that that circuit is on. Here's another one of the most common things that happens. In your basement or outside, if you use oil, you're going to have a tank like this. This is your oil tank, and this is where you keep your fuel that runs your heating system. Now, you never believe it, but just like a car, you can run out of gas, and you're not going to go anywhere. And even though you're going to say, well, my oil company delivers my oil, and they take care of it, mistakes happen. So at the top of the tank, you're going to see a gauge that looks like this. Even if you don't know what it is, all you need to do is read those marks. There's an E at the bottom and an F at the top for full. That little red plunger in the middle is where your fuel is at. All you're looking for is to make sure that it's somewhere between a quarter and full. 
If that's the case and you've got fuel, but tons of calls come in because you've got an empty tank and it somehow happened and you had no idea. So check that fuel gauge. So when you're looking at your heating system, take a look from the bottom to the top. And when we get to the top, above every heating system in the United States by code, you're going to have a little box like this. Now this is looking correct to me because it's got this little black plunger in the middle. But I'm going to show you what this is for. This is a safety. And if there's a fire or a fault, that little black piece of plastic with the metal can pop out. So when you look up at yours, if it looks like that, where the little plug is not in it, you've got a problem. And what you want to do is start looking around your floor because that little piece may have bumped out by mistake or it might have fallen out. Sometimes if you've got kids upstairs pounding the floor hard enough or something else happens, it is possible that this safety switch can pop out incorrectly and it'll be on the floor somewhere and you'll see it looking just like this. Now this is a safety device and it's designed for fire. So obviously you don't have a fire going. So if you see that on the floor, you want to try to replace that just like I'm doing here and I'm going to put it back in the socket. If it pops back out, that's not probably going to happen. But if it does, you want to call a heating professional or an electrician. But this does happen sometimes and it's the cause of many calls. So take a look to make sure that this little plug is in place. So now here we're looking at our boiler. Now in the lower center, right in the middle, is the thing called the oil burner. And on your oil burner, and I'll give you a close up here, there's a thing called the burner control. And this burner control on the upper right has a red button on it. Some of the red buttons light up, some of them are just a little red button that pops up. And here's some close ups of some very common burner controls. Now that red button is a safety button. And what happens is when your oil burner detects a fault, that button is going to pop up and it essentially is like a little mini circuit breaker and you can go ahead and press that once maybe twice but if it keeps tripping out on safety as they call it that means that the burner is detecting a fault you don't want to just keep pushing it and pushing it over and over because you could absolutely have a major problem so if you do it once and that fixes it or twice that might be okay and it'll get you up and running but you want to call to get your heating system checked or serviced as soon as possible after because you definitely want to have it looked at but hitting this reset button can get you up and going again at least for a short time So the next thing you want to check is right on your boiler, there's a little gauge and you're going to have two dials on it typically that will show a temperature and as you can see in the upper part of mine it's 170 and on the lower that's actually pressure and I have about 18 PSI. All you're really looking for with that gauge is to make sure that there is a reading. If both of those gauges are at zero that means your heat really hasn't run at all or it's just ice cold. So you're going to need to move on to diagnose something else. So as we continue our troubleshooting, if your system had pressure, power, and it seems like it's on and running, but you just don't have heat in your house, this is the part you want to check. Now what I'm doing here is I'm feeling around on these pipes. These pipes are your delivery system for the hot water that goes up to the radiators or the baseboards in your house to deliver the heat to the rooms. So if you don't have heat in those rooms, this is an important part. So these pipes are really hot. You don't want to burn yourself, but you should be able to do what I'm doing, just kind of touching them really quickly just to feel how much heat I have. So the thing you're looking for is here is where does the heat stop? Now it was hot on the bottom, then it goes into the circulator pump. Now if I feel heat after this spot here, I know that the pumps are working and they're moving hot water upward because I can feel it. But there's another spot that the hot water movement can stop. So let's take a look at that. So if your boiler is hot, but your rooms are cold, you want to start looking up in your pipes. Now they may not be as high up as this on yours, but they're going to look like these. And these are called zone control valves. These are the switches that control whether or not the hot water is going to flow to your rooms. Now if you have these on your system, all you want to do is check both sides of it, and you want to make sure the hot water is hot on both sides. If it's only hot on one side, these switches are probably not working properly. Now I'm going to show you some pictures of other zone control valves that are really common to find. You have different styles, but they essentially all do the same thing. They're electrically operated valves, and they're going to allow the flow of hot water. 
Now I did a separate video because these are so common to fail that you can just change the upper part of these valves are called the zone head. You can look at my channel and I have a video on doing that and it does not require any plumbing and a lot of times that can be your fix. Our final and last thing that we want to check is this green box. Now this one says Taiko on the side, there are other brands, but all you're looking for is here to look at any electronics on your boiler and make sure that there's at least a green light or an LCD or some indication of electricity. If you have any boxes like this and there's no lights on at all and it looks like there should be, that could be another failure that you may need some help to get resolved. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more videos coming up. Thanks for watching.